Hey, future respiratory therapist. So today, I want to ask you this question. Do you want to impress your clinical instructor or preceptor? And if the answer to that is yes, then I have the top three traits that, in my opinion, will lead you to impressing your clinical instructor or your clinical preceptor and leading to clinical success. You'll have a better time, you'll enjoy it more, and you'll get more out of it with these three traits. Okay, so here we go. The first one, you see it there on the board, is be humble. And when I say be humble, I mean don't be cocky, don't be arrogant. Don't go in thinking, oh, I got this. I know how to do all this, so just give me my meds or give me my therapies and let me go out, okay? Because that's not going to lead to success. When I say be humble, I'm telling you to embrace the nervousness that you have inside of you and express that to your clinical instructor. Now, as a clinical instructor, from my perspective, when I hear a student say, man, Joe, I'm nervous, then I lower my expectations for that student. Not in, a, not in, a, in an unfair way, but I just know that this student needs more hands-on assistance and wants me to be close by and is not overly confident. You see, when a student tells me they're nervous, it gives me a sense of relief because the other side of it are the students that are overconfident. And the overconfident students or the cocky or the arrogant students, those are the ones that I know I have to watch closer because they will hurt somebody. Because they don't have the nerves inside of them holding them back from doing something that they possibly shouldn't do. Okay, And so you want to keep that in mind first and foremost. Nerves are not bad. They should be expected while you're learning a new trait. And so embrace them, express them, and let your instructors know that, hey, I'm nervous. And then for me, I say, no problem. You're going to do great. I'll be here to help you or I'll be here to guide you along the way. Okay. And then any fumbles that you make along the way, I already know are the result of nerves. See? If you come in there nervous and, 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 and you express this, and I know you're a little scared, then I expect you to fumble a little bit. I expect you to not, not be perfect. I expect you to, to have some struggles along the way. And I'm okay with that. You're a student. That's what I expect. And so that's good. But when you come in here confident and, and cocky and arrogant and overconfident, okay, then when you fumble, when you have missteps, when you struggle, it only looks bad on you because you had it all together just 10 minutes ago and now I'm in here having to walk you through the steps, which is no different than another student. But because you presented yourself so confident, then I probably let you struggle a little more than I let other students. So be humble and understanding that you're learning a new trait, even if you're confident, even if you know deep inside you're overconfident, okay? Don't, don't let it come out as overconfidence and arrogance, okay? That's the first piece of advice for you. The second piece of advice for you is to be eager. Be eager to learn, which means you will spend most of your time in the rooms with your patients, and when you're not in the rooms with your patients, you will be involved with whatever else is happening in the area that you're working that day. You'll find yourself, instead of sitting down when you're done, you'll go watch another student perform therapy or go get involved with another learning opportunity on the floor. That's all eagerness, okay? That's, that's what comes from wanting to learn and wanting to put yourself in as many situations as possible prior to you graduating, now, the third thing comes to inquire, and it simply comes to this. You don't know everything. You, you don't know what every word in a patient's h &P means. You don't know every acronym, and so you should be asking questions. 
and questions from a from an instructor's perspective means that you're wanting to learn. You're wanting to take advantage of this time that you have as a student before you graduate. Okay? Ask every question you can think of. Anything you don't know, you ask it to be explained. And it shows the desire to learn that is going to need to be present for a long time, even after you graduate. Okay? And so inquiring and asking questions is a part of being a student. And the more questions you ask, the more excited and the more engaged and the more invested you appear to your perceptors or your clinical instructors. Okay? So keep that in mind. I'm going to leave you with this right here. I oftentimes get a conversation or some feedback like this. It says, hey, you know, Joe spends all his time with such and such or Joe spends all his time with with this student and doesn't spend time with me. Well, let me tell you why. Okay? The reason that perception is present is because whatever student it is perceived that I'm spending all of my time with is actively engaging with me and asking me questions. If you sit down and you don't ask questions, don't expect a clinical instructor or a clinical preceptor to beg you to get engaged. Don't expect them to come to you and and try to find things to teach you when you put off the, the presentation that you don't care. Okay, I would gladly spend all my time with every student who has multiple questions for me. And I will give them as much time as I need to, to, to solidify those concepts that they're asking about. Okay, And I'll do that at the expense of another student if that other student appears disengaged and not interested in learning. So questions always will put you in a better space uh, to succeed, okay? So there you go, guys. As you get ready to roll into your clinic uh, this next semester, whether it's your first, second, third, fourth, or last semester, you have something to learn. You have something to see. If, if you've already been on transport with, with 10 different patients and an 11th transport comes up, go do it. Don't ever say, I've already done that. Because no two are exactly alike. And that may be the transport that you have your greatest clinical experience from. So go get involved. Be humble, be eager, and ask lots of questions. Good luck, guys.